Hey guys, my name is Naomi and welcome back to my channel. Today I am back with a special guest. Hey guys. My husband, Pastor David. Just David. <laughs> literally just David. No one told to have the pastor. I am a pastor, but you don't have to have that. But I literally call him, I call you Pastor David yes, all the you time. Do. Yeah, you call me other things too, but yeah. I call you other things. Yeah. Pastor is this PG David. rated, G rated, R rated. It's whatever you want it to be. Alright. I mean, as long as you don't get me demonetized. So. <laughs> okay, let's just keep it to David and Dave and Pastor David and Pastor Dave and Daddy. And that's usually what you call me. Yeah. Yeah. Is Daddy actually? Daddy, no. You used Wait, to not, No, you called me Daddy when we when we were dating. You called me Daddy. Ah. Uh, but when we got married, it was an elevation. Yeah, you started calling me Daddy. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> but today we are here with another video um if you guys haven't watched our video before we did a video on on um five, five things, things we learned in marriage yes. so far because we're actually approaching five years of marriage so by the time this will be posted we're probably like a week away from our five yeah. year anniversary like five yeah. days six days yeah which is crazy Four, seven yeah a week yeah. exactly a week we've known each other for seven years and we seven years no we've known each other for six years and a half yeah but we've been married for five yeah crazy it's crazy and so that's what this video is going to be all about. It's going to be how we met and our testimony, basically our story. Yeah. So we're going to get right into that video. But before we do, because of the testimony and because it's all about like, you know, what God has done through our marriage and our life, we need to start off with a prayer. Amen. Pastor, please. Just David, but <laughs> <laughs> Lord, we thank you for this time. Lord, we just pray for everyone that's listening. Lord, we just pray that we may bring you glory through our testimony of God. May we touch people's hearts in the name of Jesus. We have prayed a... Amen. Amen. So how we met. First of all, we have to start a little, we have to give a little bit of background on um, how we grew up, I guess, yeah. where we grew up. So I'm from Congo, you're from? I'm from Trinidad, but I was born in Montreal. Yeah. And um, David was, you're from Congo, so like, but I'm you from were Congo, born in Congo. But I was born in South Africa because of the war and they wanted to kill us. So right before I was born, I moved to South Africa. And then when I was four, I then moved to Montreal. Let's start from where when we were living in Ottawa. Yeah. So like we both lived in Ottawa and um, we lived in Ottawa in the same neighborhood. Yeah, that was crazy. So we only found out that we lived in the same neighborhood after, I don't know how we found out, but we were just kind of talking Yeah, it was one like, day. And then I was like, yeah, I used to live in Russell. Mm -hmm. Russell's like a neighborhood like in our in like in our city in the capital of yeah. canada and then you were like you used to live in russell and mm -hmm. actually so funny because a lot of my friends already knew her like my friends from way back when yeah. and so like let's say my house was like like it was like kind of like a like one of those like ghetto complex yeah so my house was like here her house was like there yeah and like we probably would have crossed paths like but we never knew yeah. each other like except that naomi wasn't allowed to go outside she was kind of like a loser in the neighborhood and like i was always out like i was i think i was there until i was like 10 and i'd be out to like 11 p.m midnight oh, that's not appropriate though like let's think about it. I mean, yeah. If you're living in a bad neighborhood, I was, I was a bad kid. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. <laughs> if you're living in a, my mom was my mom was just very protected. Yeah, sure. And so smart. was my grandmother. They were very smart, mm -hmm. so they made sure I was in my house, minding my business. Yeah. But David was out here gallivanting. Yeah. I mean, what what are you gonna do in the hood, you know? But then the crazier thing too, as well, is like we were actually we went to the same elementary school. Yeah. So so I grew up only speaking French primarily, and then she she grew up speaking English. And so we went to the same elementary school, but there was like it was like cut in half. There was like a French side to it, yeah. and the English side, and like we never saw the English people and vice versa. Yeah. But we went to the same elementary the same school, school. school at the same time. So we went to the same school, lived in the same neighborhood, at the same time. Same time. And we and we knew the never, same people too. We knew the same people, yeah. but yet we never, like. We never met each other. You know, it kind of gives the vibes. You know, like when you're watching those like really good rom coms, yeah. And like you see like a girl that you know is about to meet a guy, and like they pass by like the coffee, yeah. like the coffee spot, they bump and like with each other. they bump each other. Yeah, it just it's basically what it, it even gets more beautiful because there are just moments in our high school life and our post secondary yeah. school life where we're just like we were technically crossing paths, but we never yeah. seen each other. Yeah, exactly. Because like so, we, so you went to a school called Immaculata. Yeah, I went to a school called Cornell Bay. They're both like super academic schools. And I knew people that went to school. Like I knew a couple people. Yeah. And so like once again, like I knew a lot of people like in her friend circle, but like we would just never see each other. Or yeah. it could have been that we were like in the same place, but I just never saw you. I never you never saw, saw you. me. So that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Now fast forward and like I'm in like my early twenties or yeah. I'm just getting into my twenties. So maybe like 18, 19, 20, 21. I'm like my life is in shambles. Yeah. Like I'm doing the most. I'm out here not in a good way yeah i was just smoking drinking 
um dot 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 yes dot 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 <laughs> life was just crazy for me at that time mm -hmm. and i went through a lot of things in my childhood that i just felt were just creeping back up to me in yeah, that like, like it was like expressing itself in your adulthood. yeah it yeah. was expressing myself in the worst ways like i was trying different drugs i was hanging out with the wrong crowds mm -hmm. things were just not going well especially when my friend shimia went to toronto it's like i just didn't have any friends and i was just you know being friends with anybody basically yeah. and it was just so wrong i found myself getting caught up in this thing called new ageism if you guys don't know what that is it's basically like a buffet of religions and you choose what works for you yeah. and it's like spirituality but child is witchcraft yeah long story short it is witchcraft and i caught myself really really deep in that and what were you doing at that time so well so when i was 14 so by the way we're christian uh, we believe in Jesus. And so when I was 14, I went to like a church camp. And then long story short, like I heard the Holy Spirit. I felt the power of God. And like I knew God existed from that day on. Yeah. But then I just kind of like lived a shambles life up until I was in my 20s or early 20s. Yeah. Um, so I joined a fraternity around the same time that you were, do fo you were doing foolishness. Yeah. And like she knew people in the fraternity that I was in. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you even went to parties. I went to parties at, at my fraternity, at his fraternity that I was in. But like once again, we would just never cross paths. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, because I think if I had known her in my past, because my conversion and like the way I switched up from like being someone like in the world, drugs, party, and so on and so forth, then going to like church was so I won't call it dramatic, but same with you was like so like a complete yeah. 180. It was like, a salt to palm. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. a complete 180 that I don't think I would have wanted to then date someone yeah that i used to know Same. in the past yeah i, really... I would have been like oh no 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 i used to know this girl no that's just like that's my past yeah. let me get myself like get myself like you know someone that mm -hmm. i've never met because we were always like once again we were always in the same circles even when i was going to my church that we both go to now yeah. like union people yeah. from my church yeah exactly right so yeah it was just like it was crazy so just to give like a bit of context like we were both at that time like early 20s living separate but the same type of lifestyle yeah. it was like we were both into like drugs both into um spirituality yeah, witchcraft yeah. all that kind of stuff Alt occultism it was just like our lives were very similar and they were just going down and down in yeah. shambles but then in 2014 yes yeah, so in 2014 october mm -hmm. um so i gave my life to christ and then like i was talking about like i just completely switched up my life like completely 180 and so i started going to our current church campus russia and transform my life center um so like i was going there for two years and then she started going there mm -hmm. um two years she actually started going there two years exactly afterwards yeah so i started getting i started going there october 2014 you started going there 2016 october october yeah exactly and the way that i found myself at church was very very interesting i was actually like going through a breakup slash abortion slash mm -hmm just deeper and deeper into shambles and i just found myself like wow is this really my life yeah, yeah is this really my situation and then i was in my room one day and i remember where i worked everybody would talk about campus, campus rush. rush yeah and i'm like okay these church people like that's not for me but at that moment in my room i was so depressed i was so high i was so frustrated with my life yeah. that i picked up my high self got ready and went to Carleton University and went to Campus Rush, this church that they always talked about. And so that's like my first experience with like truly wanting to give myself to the Lord. But I had been to church before, but yeah. something was just different this yeah. time because I was so desperate. Like mm -hmm. the woman at the well, like I was yeah. like, child, mm -hmm. I need me some Jesus. I need me some everlasting water because yeah. what I've been trying before is not working for me. After campus rush on the Thursday, I went to church on the Sunday mm -hmm. at TLC and I met somebody. <laughs> I think your first service was October 16, 2016. And I remember like I was a type in that, like the season that I was in, like I the just- you remember, you remember the date? Yeah, I remember the date. That yeah. was my first Sunday service. Yeah, yeah, that was the first Sunday service. And yeah. like I was a type, like I just didn't talk to girls. Cause like, once again, I wanted to I kind of went to the extreme but mm -hmm. i wanted to be so different from the life that i used to have that like i didn't talk to girls at all like if it was super platonic super, like I, I didn't want to invest my feelings with a woman that i knew that i wasn't going to marry so it didn't make sense for me to even date if i knew that okay this is not someone that could see myself marrying mm -hmm. and i remember um after service like i was in a like i was in a really big rush i wasn't trying to like even stay after service i'm about to leave and then a friend of ours um I think he brought you to church, I think. Yeah, yeah. He, he had invited me to the to Sunday church. service. Yeah, And he's like, oh, hey, here, meet Naomi. And da -da -da. He was so pressed on me meeting this guy. Yeah, I was so, like, he, okay. so he was telling Naomi that, like, that you know, 
you should meet me and then yeah. i just saw her i was like I, was, I don't even know what i was thinking that day but i was just such a nervous I'm like oh hey how are yeah you doing? Like, like it was a really quick i like, didn't think anything of it like, yeah. it was like oh, okay no like it wasn't even and yes she's beautiful but like once again the type of zone that i was in i didn't want to even be like enticed like, mm -hmm. I, like although yes yeah, she's very very beautiful like i didn't it's only literally the next sunday that i'm like oh wow this was actually really beautiful <laughs> But that's but the, like the first Sunday I was like oh okay cool so the next Sunday I'm like hey listen I was like oh, wait 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 just to pause you there even like after I met him I was so like not into chilling with guys or not even into getting into relationship or back into shambles so when I got home after that Sunday service I remember taking a picture on my Snapchat and like just saving it in my in my um, Snapchat folder for myself yeah. and I wrote this is the day I found my worth. Mm -hmm. Not because of any guy or because yeah. of anything. It was because I had actually came in contact with Jesus and yeah. I loved it. And I didn't even think about, okay, I just met this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about it. Yeah. But then the I, next until, Sunday. Until the next Sunday, though. He was, he was itching <laughs> Until the next Sunday. I won't lie. Um, so, once again, because I was super intense, like, I didn't even, I didn't really think that I wanted to ask her, ask, like, ask her on a date. But like I was like I want to get to know her. Just something was just itching, and I knew that it wasn't lust. It wasn't like flesh. Like some of my spirits, I like, get to know her, mm -hmm. and like I knew it wasn't me because that's like that was the opposite. Like when I'm telling you for two years, I was talking to nobody. So I was like, okay, cool. So I'm like, hey, as a like, holy spirit, I can't just get to know her. Like I need to get to know her in a safe environment where like I won't, I'm not complete with your emotions. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, hey, let me do like a group hangout. Let's all go to Moxie's. Moxie's is a restaurant in our city. Mm -hmm. So like, I I like during service, I'm texting like one person two person three like i got like seven people to agree to go like after service to like go eat and i remember i invited um the girl that brought like that was with you one of your friends yeah mm -hmm. knowing that she would invite you because that like no yeah i think after service like we actually spoke i'm like oh i think i told no, you no like, what happened is you came you came out to me after service and you were like oh yeah a few of us are going to moxie's and i was like yeah someone just told me and you're like so you're gonna come through and i was like child i don't know come through I was like, I don't know, but then I could see that he was feeling me. No, you can't. I can see. I can see he was feeling on, me. on the no, 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 you cannot. Um, I can see it. No, okay, so so that's so we go to the Moxies. Mm -hmm. There's no way you could see I was feeling you because I was been. Child, I can see it. Oh, we'll get there, but there's, there's no way that's on it because I was I was playing. Or at least I think I think I was playing it so cool, but so we get to the Moxies and then like. Oh man, there was like three people trying to talk to me, like like three of like uh, like some of my my I wouldn't call them guy friends, but guys that I was mentoring. And Naomi was like in the corner. It was like a booth in a U shape type yeah. of thing. And I was at like at the at the at the head. Naomi was in the corner to the left. Mm -hmm. And in my, and there was two people between myself and Naomi. And someone I remember a guy was speaking to me, and I'm just thinking in my head I'm like, hey, how can I get myself from this seat to that seat? And like he's asking so many questions. I'm like, oh, I don't want to cut him off. And I remember at one point he got up, two people got up to like mm -hmm. use the washroom. Then I just came over and I'm like, I think I asked her like, oh, how are you? Because yeah. you didn't say much that yeah, whole time. Yeah, that whole time, like, I was like, kind of like, why am I here? Like, I was very shy. I was very like, mm -hmm. reserved person. I still kind of am. But like, I just was not talking to many people at the time. And then when I started- You're also like, new to the church. I was also new to the church. So it's like, I didn't really know what to talk about. Like, what yeah. are we going to talk about? <laughs> So I know that I, eventually you made your way to my side. Yeah, and I just asked like, how was? I don't know what I asked. Like, how did you find the lunch or something like that? It was it was too late to really converse because like yeah. we're getting ready to leave and stuff like that. So I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, cool. But I mean, I had like, yeah, I didn't see really much of her like in terms of hearing her speak, and that was like my main thing. Like, I wanted to see like what's in her mind, what's yeah. in like her soul. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I just like I just sat on him. Okay, all right. So we we left that day. Now the next Sunday, I told myself, okay. This is a Sunday that I see. I was once again. I was being in, like in what's the word? Intentional. Like I generally just wanted to know. There was just something. Yeah. I'm telling you, it wasn't. It, it was had to be spiritual. Like I was like for some reason I had to like get to know you. I, I couldn't understand why. Mm -hmm. And so the next Sunday I'm like hitting up the same group of people. I'm like hey Leo, let's go to boxes again. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's like oh I can't I can't I can't I can't I can't. So I'm like oh shoot like. I can't go to Moxes with this girl one on one. Once again, new girl in church. Mm -hmm. I'm a leader in church. I don't want her to think that I'm trying to like poach her. Mm -hmm. and, you know, what I'm just, like you just like not it'll a good be, look. yeah, not a good look. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I mean, if you're unattractive, it would have been a good look. But then, but people are like you know because you're attractive, people are gonna think, oh, you just want to like you know, sort of scoop. Um, <laughs> so I asked one of one of like one of my guys, and he's like, and he's like the most. How do I explain it? He's like super like 
I, like he's usually would say no to these type of things for whatever reason. He's like, oh yeah, yeah sure, we'll go. I, I couldn't imagine. I was like, oh, okay, shoot, okay, cool. So we go on the drive there. Mm -hmm. I'm driving Naomi and her friend, and then Naomi asked me. Now you can tell the truth. She asked me if I can. On the drive my, there. Yeah, on the drive there, you asked me for my Snapchat. Like, what was okay, yesterday? okay. Sometimes Love. the truth kind of gets. No, no, no. I remember like, like was this story kind of gets a little bit shaky. Love, I remember like it was. No, no, love. I remember like like it was yesterday. You were sitting behind. I only asked and then you your for your Snapchat sitting, no, after, no, 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 no. after the thing. We're gonna get there. You asked me for my Snapchat. Then in my mind, I was like, okay, cool. Like, and I know why. I knew that you asked me on the way there because like I was never on Snapchat. Like it was so like I'm just not a social media type of guy. So my head was like, oh, okay. She so just asked me for my Snapchat. I was like, okay, I guess that's what you know, people do. I'm like, people don't ask me. Okay, was, how old are you? I was like, people don't exchange numbers anymore. We're stuff. the same age. <laughs> so I'm okay, cool. And then uh, I think I gave you like my, I don't know what it's called, my tag. What is it called? We get to the restaurant, and then I'm like, I don't really care about the two other people. Like, I don't care about them. I don't want to talk to them in that moment. And it's so crazy because the whole time, my friend was talking to her friend. And then her and I were talking for like two hours, and it's almost like there was a wall. Like, yeah, like we. I didn't hear didn't a single that. word. I don't remember even what we eat. What, what we yeah. ate. Yeah. I didn't hear a single word of what they said. Just the whole time we we're just talking and talking. Yeah. Everything, politics, business, life, like, and like that's actually exactly what I wanted. I wanted to really like digest like what was in her mind. Yeah. Of course, there's only so much you can know. Like, yeah. In like that two hours. But like after that day, I was like, yeah, I, I'm like, I'm sold with this girl. Like, I'm completely sold. And uh, but that that evening after everything, we you, went to sorry, your friend's Sorry, just you add, you add, you asked me for my number. Like, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, 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 don't be like your Child. pastor. Don't, don't lie. What she said was, Pastor oh. David. So basically, there was this YouTuber that we both knew about, and she's like, oh, I know about this YouTuber. I was like, yeah, I know him too. And she's like, hey, give me your number, and I'll send him. Like, I'll send you like. No, there was a certain video that, a that you hadn't seen. And in my, in my head, I'm like, wait, I just told this girl that I know the exact YouTuber no, she's no, talking no. about. <laughs> I can easily go myself, but I'm not gonna say no to her. No. What had happened actually is you didn't know the video that I was referring to. But I knew the YouTube right? concerning this man. Yeah, but I could on have YouTube. Been, but I could and have I was trying to help you out. That's okay, it. So I could have easily just gone, but that was like when we really started like talking, mm -hmm. and then pretty much every every day for like two weeks. Well, every day for like the next up until now. We yeah, spoke we every always single, spoken. Yeah. Every, there hasn't been a day. So I was like at like day 14 of speaking to her like every single day. He would always send me good morning texts. Yeah. Every morning. Sometimes actually we were talking so much that there was no good morning. Yeah, it was, it was a like continuation. continuation. Like the conversation. And just it was boring. like when the main thing they were talking about during that time was like purpose, right? I just wanted to make sure, and I'm sure she wanted to yeah. as well, mm -hmm. that like not only our values were aligned, but or our goals, but yeah. more importantly our purpose. And, and it I, was so like it was creepy. Yeah, I, I thought she was a witch because like I'm reading the text messages. I'm like, who told? I'm like, who told her? Cause she's saying stuff that I had never told anyone right about what i wanted to do mm -hmm. and it's like she's saying that that's what she wants to do so it didn't make sense to me because i had just never met someone yeah. like that so it almost is like it seemed almost really fishy fishy like yeah. ev like everything like things that i hadn't spoken to anybody about yeah. it's just like things that just dropped in my spirit as i started going to church yeah like oh like i would really like to serve god in this way and like yeah. for him it was the exact or that like going back to africa i'm seeing yeah. i'm using africa broadly there's yeah, like different in places in Africa or like doing like certain things for ministry like and it also in the culture yeah, ministry, in the business, influence it's just like, I and, was like mm. and, and during that time, I remember my friends because they were like, oh David, you've been single for too long etc, 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 we're trying to set you up with someone and I remember they were trying to set me up with someone but like, in my spirit, it just didn't feel right and in my head, I was like, I remember going downstairs I was living with my mom at the time, I was still in university and I went in the basement and I'm like praying, I'm like, hey God, I don't want to be confused because I'm like, I've talked to this girl every single day for the last, like, I think it was seven days actually. Yeah. I'm like, and then there's this person at the room trying to bring my weight. It doesn't make sense. God, it's either Naomi, this person or no one. And like right in that moment, I rhetorically, it's Naomi. And like, it's the same. Yes. One thing I, I really appreciated about David is that he was very intentional. I remember even um, we had certain rules about kissing, like touching, stuff like that. About, about touching, about holding hands. Just like we had certain rules about how we wanted I'm to. Amish. <laughs> <laughs> Amish. But we had certain rules basically, and so he was very intentional about how he treated me yeah. and very honest. Yeah, and I told. And, I remember telling you like I was like, I don't want a female friend. Like, yeah. Then if I'm talking to you, I'm talking. Specific because I want a wife. I'm not saying that's where we're going to go, but I want to know the only reason why I'm talking to you. If this doesn't work out, trust me, there's no relationship beyond this. 
because yeah. I, like it doesn't make sense because I want my wife to be my best friend. There's right? no just being friends. There's just no yeah. just being. I've already invested too many too much emotions in this, so it's either we go all the way or it's done, or and I'll never talk to you again. Yeah. Type of thing. Which but, I was I was yeah. totally fine with that because like at, at the same time I wasn't trying to waste time either, yeah. and I feel like we we're both like serious about where we're trying to go, and you were really intentional. Like yeah. after, I mean, this guy was saying he loved me after. Yeah, I told her days. no, 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 it wasn't the three days. It was after two weeks. I remember because I was in I was shopping for something uh -huh. and I remember I was in the mall and then I, I was talking to you while I was in the mall and then on the way back from the mall I was going to my car that was parked on the second floor and then you said something and then I was like yeah well there's no point in me hiding this I'm like yeah I love you and you just said something that I just touched my hair but yeah they already said a bunch of stuff she said I said a bunch of stuff <laughs> and for me it wasn't crazy because once again I wouldn't tell anyone to do this yeah and I wouldn't you know everyone's different everyone's story's mm -hmm. different so but for me the main thing was like love is an action yeah even if i would known you for 50 years i wouldn't have enough information to know whether or not i love you mm -hmm. right so from that thing i made that decision that yeah this is the woman that only that i want to marry but the woman that i love yeah and like let me act it out right yeah and then you've changed so much from that time and so have mm -hmm. i so it's like i wasn't like i didn't need more data and information to yeah. like be like okay should i commit or should i not like yeah. you know what i mean i feel like sometimes people like we think that we need like five years seven years ten years worth of information but then the moment you get married, you realize that you don't actually know the person, no, right? No. People change, people grow, so. Yeah, and it's just, yeah, even leading up to our marriage, like the certain things that we like went through, even during our marriage, it feels like the journey was actually orchestrated by God. Yeah. Like, from the beginning of living in a neighborhood in Russell, yeah, to yeah. now, and to where it's gonna go. Yeah. It feels like, I don't mean to sound cliche, but I feel like it's actually evidence that God actually brings together things that he intended yeah. to be together. Yeah, no, definitely. If I look back at all these moments from even just our childhood, it doesn't like, it actually doesn't make sense. Like no. if you watch as a movie, you think it's a cheesy movie. Like, oh, yeah. that, that would never happen in real life. <laughs> yeah. And so for me, I'm like, wow, like even just like how we met, like what if I had not been at church at that exact same time? Yeah. But when I began to like develop all these feelings for Naomi, because it was so new to me, like I hadn't liked a girl in so long, you know what yeah. I mean? Let alone I had never loved a girl or a woman except my mom yeah. and my sisters but in that way i had never loved someone mm -hmm. so i remember i i was confiding in certain people and the, and i was like oh like this is what i'm feeling and then yeah. the people would, say, would tell me like oh no like she's not the one for you <laughs> so like there was all these things that were happening and this i think the same thing was even happening yeah. for me too yeah there like, was someone else that she was confiding in that's yeah but let, let like we realized that those two people wanted to be like one person wanted to be with you the other yeah. person wanted to be with me people were truly trying to like yeah Twist and I'm, I'm not calling them bad people, no, but no, these no. things happen. Like, honestly, but what, like, what would have happened if we, had, if we would if have we listened? listened. My, our first day was at the gym, remember that? Yeah. It was it was on a Friday. We had service on a Thursday till like 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. Then I dropped you home and then we're, we went to a CrossFit gym. Yeah, at like 5 a.m. Yeah, at 5 a.m. It was in Canada. And my thing, I was like, yeah, hey, I want to see if like she has discipline. So I want to see like, okay, like yeah. it wasn't about seeing if she has curves and stuff like that, which I mean, you do. But um, I want to like, okay, what's your discipline like? Like, I wanted to like. That's how intentional we were. You know, what yeah. I mean, like, we were always trying to like do those type of activities. Yeah. We never just chill for chilling's sake. No. There was always like a purpose. And we to always it. like. I feel like every time that we were even meeting up um, on Carlton campus yeah. or whatever, it was always to like work, work on something. Towards yeah. something. That's always been a part of our relationship. And like now, I feel like we do everything yeah, together. We, we together. do podcasts together, YouTube yeah. together, everything. Like we just yeah. work the things together. And I love that about our relationship. Yeah, I love that yeah. about our friendship. Cause we friends the people that know me the yeah. best literally on this earth is like my wife and my children yeah. like that know me like the best right but yeah. if i'm being honest like it's really my wife that knows me the best the best yeah. and it's like it's good to have that like yeah. you know be able like i remember one time i'm just thinking about all these things i remember one time we we're just driving and i think we had been dating for like six seven months by the way we started dating let's say officially yeah 2017 like january for example january. and then i proposed to her by september by of september. 2017. Yeah mainly because i'm like i didn't need once again i didn't need more information or proof or like i didn't yeah. you know thank god i made the right <laughs> the right decision but um i remember one time we we're just driving down the street and we're going back to carlton university and i just wanted her to feel comfortable because i felt like we were kind of like a bit reserved mm -hmm. and then we just started like screaming remember that i said just yeah. i told her just like not not like argument but like yeah. a scream like just like just like yell let like let her loose and then and i was like yell yeah like yeah just start, and i started just making sounds and laughing but like from that day on like it was just super like now we're just really open yeah like you just actually made it beautiful to be like 
genuine and just yeah, be open with someone. Yeah, and I find like that's like the that's like one of the most important things in a marriage yeah. or a relationship is like when you're actually friends with the person, like you can be honest with the yeah. person, you can be open with the person, and yeah, like not reserved about certain things. Like just yeah. truly tell the person what's on your mind, yeah. and that's always really helped our marriage and helped yeah. our relationship. But yeah, that's how we met, guys. That's our testimony of how we met and how we got together. Yeah um yeah and yeah now we're approaching five years like i just said we have one child he's about to be two and then we have another child on the way oh uh, yeah we have a child on the way um mm -hmm. yeah that's i guess i don't know if we were going to mention the video but it's mm -hmm. been an absolute blessing obviously yeah. naomi's radiating you can't tell she's pregnant mm -hmm. um but yeah so naomi is we're nearly there yeah you know it's all oh, she's nearly there in terms of giving birth and yeah. it's just like it's exciting it's that exciting. we're gonna have another child like it's just yeah and god is god is just truly good this is to encourage somebody i don't know if you've been from relationship to relationship or if you're just kind of confused about what god's doing when it comes to marriage or relationships in your life if you just trust god and lean on the holy spirit there is truly an expected end that he has for you that is beautiful um so hopefully i hope you guys have enjoyed this video it'll be the first of many we're actually launching a podcast her and i like a mm -hmm. dedicated podcast i've been saying this for years that i was yeah. gonna take over the podcast a little that i know that we're gonna create a new podcast a so, new podcast yeah we're launching a new podcast very very soon um i don't know if we're gonna have visuals hopefully we'll find a way to do visuals yeah mm -hmm. we'll have audio at the very least and all of that's going to be leading up to our conference called Divine Influence Conference mm -hmm. at the end of this year in October. We had one last year. It was an amazing time. It was it our was first powerful. conference. Yeah, it was powerful. And it goes back to like doing stuff with your spouse. Like I was there. Yes. I was helping. She was the yes. one heading it. But it was just super fun to like see yeah. you in your like your own element. Uh -huh. And yeah, yeah, I was really proud of it. Yeah, I got emotional. I don't usually Thank get emotional. You. So yeah, I only get emotional when it comes to my family. Wow. But, uh, yeah, with that being said, let's close in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this time. We thank you just for your word that delivers. Lord, I just pray for anyone that is confused or in fear in regards to relationship or even in regards to your will for their lives. I just pray that your Holy Spirit may give them a sound mind, oh God, and may they have peace of mind in all their decisions. Lord, we thank you for this time, and we pray that this video may bless them as it has blessed us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have all prayed. Amen. Amen. I'll see you guys next week for a new video. Bye. Bye, guys.